Hello everybody from Plant Reviews UK. Today is the 28th of September and uh, I'm talking in this video about one of the uh, most uh, uh, peculiar and actually one of the rarest plants uh, available in the United Kingdom uh, as uh, house plants in this case because unfortunately this plant is uh, not hard in the UK. And it is uh, Brunfelsia uh, jamaicensis or jamaicensis. Uh, it is uh, an um, absolutely uh, stunning plant that I recently purchased for the second time from Fibex Nurseries, uh, a nursery that has an amazing variety of uh, plants, of conservatory plants, uh, hibiscuses as well, and other plants, uh, but in particular offers some very rare uh, conservatory and uh, um, indoor uh, plants and uh, most importantly for me many of them are incredibly fragrant as this one that indeed is also uh, commonly known as uh, lady of the night uh, so um, that uh, is actually a, a pretty common name for different var uh, varieties and different species of plants uh, and usually uh, the epithet of lady of the night belongs to uh, plants that have flowers that are very fragrant mostly at night and the, the reason uh, of this is because uh, most of the species are pollinated by moths that uh, of course are the uh, night uh, uh, night lovers uh, uh, relatives uh, night lover relatives of the butterflies and uh, um, rather than being attracted by color are most attracted by scent uh, in the flowers that they uh, pollinate uh, Brunfensia germicensis is uh, a, a species that belongs to the family Solanaceae, so the same family of tomatoes nightshade um, Brugmansia and uh, many other other plants including actually uh, some very fragrant plant. In particular the genus Brunfelsia uh, was uh, um, described uh, by uh, Charles Plumier, uh, Charles Plumier in 1753 and the genus name uh, is in honor of the theologian and botanist Otto uh, Brunfels. Whilst the uh, epithet, the specific epithet Jamechensis, uh, refers to the uh, native distribution of this plant that indeed is in Jamaica, uh, where it grows on mountain forest above uh, 1,400 meters, and uh, in particular, uh, in particular, is uh, quite. Um, well um, distributed on the Blue Mountains of Jamaica. Unfortunately in the wild uh, this plant uh, is uh, kind of endangered. I read that it is a, a plant that is uh, described as vulnerable in the wild. Uh, luckily uh, this is also one of the uh, plants that is uh, uh, very appreciated as ornamental plant, especially in the tropics, but also makes a, a great house plant, obviously in the tropics the plant is hardy so uh, it's pretty obvious that this plant uh, would be absolutely uh, appreciated as garden plants but I have to say that uh, it is uh, uh, quite uh, attractive uh, as house plants especially if you like uh, fragrant uh, indoor plants and uh, to be honest there are not that uh, many uh, available um, unless of course you think about orchids uh, of which many species are uh, available as indoor plants and many of them are fragrant but if you want something different from an orchid really you don't have many choices available for plants to be grown as house plants Brunfelsia Jovencensis is uh, just one species of uh, about uh, uh, 50 in the genus Brunfelsia, however, is definitely one of the most uh, fragrant. Uh, Brunfelsia's, uh, uh, spe Brunfelsia species uh, have uh, different uh, growing habits, uh, most of them are shrubs, like indeed the Brunfelsia Jovencensis, this is actually, a, I think it is an air-layered cut. Uh, that uh, I'm very lucky enough that it is in bloom. However, 
uh, other species are small trees uh, and some of them are also lianas. Um, in particular, Brooks, um, Professor German Sciences is a shrub that can grow up to 90 cm tall, so about 3 foot tall. Uh, the plant has uh, um, pointy leaves, uh, I would say mid to uh, dark green, and uh, uh, it uh, um, grows uh, flowers uh, on the leaf uh, axils. Unfortunately, uh, I received this plant, uh, um, actually, luckily, Fabrics Nursery sent me this plant with an incredible amount of buds. Unfortunately, possibly due to the stress of the transport, uh, most of them dropped after I received the plant and I repotted, however, I am very, very lucky that one of the buds actually stayed on the plant and got the chance to uh, bloom. Uh, the um, flowers are absolutely stunning. Uh, they are, as you can see, uh, tubular in shape. Uh, they're about, I would say, 7-8 centimeters long and the uh, flower ends uh, in, a, um, in five lobes, uh, very ruffled as you can see. And the color is um, white, uh, I would say ivory white actually. Uh, it's not like uh, pure white, um, and um, what really makes the um, flower amazing is not only the uh, incredible beauty, as you can see, of the flower, but the uh, fabulous scent that unfortunately I can't show you on uh, the video, but uh, is uh, absolutely gorgeous. I've read that uh, some people describe the fragrance as otherworldly or uh, uh, some other people describe uh, the fragrance as citrus, as sweet. To me the fragrance actually doesn't smell like citrus at all. Uh, it's definitely pleasant but uh, to my nose, but really uh, the first time I uh, smelled this flower and uh, this flower smells mostly at night, uh, during the day the scent uh, is present but it's very very faint, at night uh, becomes a lot more evident and uh, in my opinion the scent is, uh, um, I would describe it like a spicy and sweet. Uh, kind of resembles me uh, marzipan with some notes of uh, cinnamon but mostly like marzipan and uh, it resembles uh, to me very very closely the fragrance of two orchids I have, the Phalaenopsis uh, um, Sweet Memory Leodoro and uh, uh, Rincostilis Gigantea. Orchids are very very distantly uh, related to Bronfelsia, so I'm not too sure why the fragrance is uh, so similar, but you know, of course, uh, plants that uh, are very uh, different and very uh, far uh, in um, phylogeny, in um, their plants that are basically not related to each other, sometimes can have uh, flowers that uh, look pretty similar, uh, or in this case can have evidently scents, fragrances that smell <laughs> pretty similar as uh, in this case. And if you love fragrant plants, definitely I would recommend this plant. Uh, as I obviously would recommend uh, the two orchids I uh, named just two minutes ago because the fragrance is absolutely gorgeous and the, and the other two orchids as well are quite uh, fragrant. Uh, they can really fill uh, the room with their scent but they smell mostly during the day. Uh, they're not really night uh, fragrant orchids so it's quite funny that uh, the uh, plants are very similar in fragrance, but uh, the two orchids smell um, very well during the day, while this one, the Bronfelsia, smells mostly at night. Uh, actually, Lady of the Night is a name that is used for another orchid, the Brassavola nodosa, an orchid that I tried three times to grow, but uh, all three times it died, unfortunately, I'm not too sure why. Uh, because I bought it from different uh, um, 
sellers. I would have expected this plant, uh, the Barasa Valonovus is actually famous to be quite easy to grow, but evidently uh, I failed uh, all the time with these plants, uh, uh, with this Brassavola. I'm not too sure why, because I have other Brassavola hybrids as well as many other orchids, and Brassavolas are closely related to Catrias, to, uh, but, of which I have an incredible variety of species and plants, and I uh, very rarely have problems with Catrias and um, um, Catria species and hybrids, however, evidently Brassavola nodosa was not really uh, keen of my environment. Anyway, talk, uh, going back to the Brunfelsia gemecensis, uh, as far as it is a uh, stunning, uh, stunningly fragrant plant with amazing flowers, uh, you have to take into account that the plant is uh, very poisonous and uh, this is due to uh, some alkaloids. Many plants in the family Solanaceae uh, are poisonous and Brunfelsia is uh, uh, no exception in this. So if you have pets or kids at home, obviously be uh, careful and uh, that uh, they do not ingest any part of the plant. About the cultivation of this, pl of this plant, I found that many people say that this plant is pretty easy to grow. I had, this is the second time I grow Brunfelsia Jamechensis. Uh, the first time unfortunately died after uh, a few weeks, I believe, because uh, I kept the soil a bit too moist. I used acidic soil, but without any uh, perlite, so probably didn't have enough aeration. So I decided in um, uh, this occasion, because luckily I was able to find Brunfelsia Jamechensis again available at Fabrix Nursery, I uh, decided to uh, um, pot it in a uh, terracotta pot that uh, leaves quite a bit of aeration and what I used this time rather than um, acidic soil um, I used bark because the bark it's acidic and this also gives a lot of aeration. It seems at the moment the plant is quite happy. Uh, I found that uh, the plant uh, really is also um, uh, prefers to dry out in between the waterings, and definitely. But and I realized that actually many orchids when cultivated in, in bark, like for example Cattleyas, they also like to uh, dry up in between the waterings. So I decided you know what, I will try this uh, this method of cultivation with Rufelsia Geomechensis this time and I have to say I have it from about one month and uh, of course the buds dropped but uh, this may be mostly related to stressful transport rather than um, the really the uh, media because I just uh, placed the, pl the, pl the plant in this medium. Anyway, uh, so far the plant looks good other than losing a few buds, but that's again is something that many plants uh, when sent in bud or in bloom can have a bud blast can happen anytime for a variety of factors. So I don't think that uh, cultivating the plant in bark was the reason of the um, drop of, uh, of the dropping of most of the buds. And anyway, uh, the plant looks still uh, perfectly uh, healthy, uh, other than this pointy brownish uh, leaves that anyway were brownish already when I received the plant again might have been uh, a little bit stressed during transport. Uh, about the cultivation of this plant, uh, so um, I already uh, said that prefers acidic soil so um, use it if you have, don't want to use bark I would recommend use acidic soil but with perlite to make it uh, well aerated and uh, it's very important good drainage the plant really doesn't like uh, I've also read that doesn't like um, to have uh, wet feet uh, so to say and um, uh, please also keep uh, the plant, uh, leave it dry in between waterings. About the hardiness of this plant, as I said, it's not hard in the UK, unfortunately, the plant is hardy only in USDA uh, 10 and uh, 11. Uh, but, however, can be grown uh, very well as a house plant. Uh, I found it, uh, of course, uh, the first specimen I had died, so. I failed it in, I kept it probably too moist and also realized that this plant is very sensitive to mealybugs. So try to 
uh, check this plant periodically for mealybugs because really they can kill this plant uh, very very uh, easily in the case of the Brunfelsia I also had the Brunfelsia Americana together with the German Francis and uh, the Brunfelsia Americana lasted actually quite a few months but then it was killed by the uh, mealybugs so really I this is a pest that you have to be very very careful about if you want to cultivate the Brunfelsia uh, about the uh, exposure uh, Brunfelsia does very well with bright sunlight in the morning uh, and is protect needs to be protected by hot sun in the afternoon so I would recommend to if you grow it in a windowsill like me uh, grow it on a windowsill uh, can be south facing between uh, autumn and spring but in summer however put it in an east facing uh, windowsill obviously if you are in the northern hemisphere the opposite will be valid if you are in the southern hemisphere but uh, me in the United Kingdom I um, recommend to uh, put the plant on a south facing windowsill between autumn and spring and uh, on an east facing windowsill uh, in uh, summer uh, about uh, the um, um, this plant, I think to have explained you all the information I got and how I am cultivating it again. Uh, I just started for about a month. Uh, however, I even if in just uh, from about this month, I think this combination of bark and terracotta pot is. Uh, doing pretty well of course i will keep you updated uh, you are very welcome to um, write me any question you have about this plant and of course in the next few months also to ask me updates about this plant and i will be very happy to uh, uh, answer to uh, any inquiry any of the questions you have as usual i hope that you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching if you like this video uh, would you agree if you can please subscribe and um, uh, obviously give it a thumbs up if you didn't like this video of course please let me know what you didn't like and i will try my best to improve with my next videos again thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you next time bye